Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This is Aikido, a dynamic VCA mixer from Bastel and Casper Electronics. It is at its heart a quad VCA module, which brings in concepts of performance controls, mixing and submixing, and dynamic processing by way of two configurable envelope followers. Leaving aside the true cliche that you can never have too many VCAs in Eurorack, the combination of features in Aikido and the way that they are combined and can be combined means that it's able to serve a whole different range of roles in uh, a patch. And so in this video, I'm going to attempt to create a video manual of sorts. In the first part of the video, we are going to take a look at the features Aikido has from a sort of technical perspective, look at them in isolation. And in the second part of the video, we'll use Aikido in a bunch of different roles in a bunch of different patches to see what you can do with it. In order to make as comprehensive a video as possible, it's probably not going to be the shortest thing. So take a look at the chapter markers if you need to jump to a particular subject. And in the interests of transparency, this video has been sponsored by Bastel. Uh, so thank you to Bastel for supporting the channel. And with that, let's start talking about Aikido. So let's begin by taking a look at the four VCAs which form the core of Aikido. Uh, because if you do just want to use Aikido as four discrete uh, independent VCAs, you can absolutely do that. They each have identical feature sets and they're all calibrated in exactly the same way. So I'll just start by turning these faders down and we'll just talk through the inputs that we have for the VCAs. So these three rows here are all identical and they're related to the VCAs. We have a CV input, we have a signal input, and then we have an output. So I'll take a triangle oscillator and I'll just poke it into the input there. And then I'll just take the output here into my mixer. And if I turn up the level here, indeed we hear a triangle wave as one would expect. So the fader here acts as the VCA's initial level. Now um, on Aikido, uh, this point around here is sort of zero dB. So we're at unity at this point, which means that we have got quite a range to go, which allows us to boost things uh, uh, above the original signal level. And when we do that, we do actually get some quite nice saturation happening inside the VCA. So as we take this triangle wave up into the upper reaches of the fader here, you can hear we start to get some burn and thickness. The fundamental really starts to pop out. So um, up until this point on the fader, uh, you know, Aikido is, is a pretty clean VCA and we've got some character up at the top here if we want to burn things a little bit. Lovely stuff. The knobs below each fader act as an attenuverter for the CV input, but if you don't have anything plugged into the CV input, they are normaled to a voltage source. So we can actually use them as a level control themselves. Because they're center dedented, one thing that this allows you to do is set like an initial level here, which is kind of your baseline for a sound, uh, if you were, especially if you're using Aikido uh, as a mixer at this point. And then you've got this as kind of a boost and you can easily find your way back to your original uh, level because of the dent in the um, in the middle there. So that's really useful. Uh, but of course, probably uh, more likely with the attenuverter, we're going to be plumbing in some CV. So I've just got an LFO here and we'll just plumb that in there. And if we turn up the attenuverter here, we've got our LFO pumping away there. And of course, that's going to be rel relative to the initial level. So if we wanted to have it droning and then pushing up. And of course, because we get that saturation at the top end, you can actually get tumble changes just by using the VCA. So it's kind of a sort of a basic wave shape happening up at the top there, which is actually really cool. The um, inputs on the VCA are, are of course, um, DC coupled, so you can use the VCA to control uh, control voltage levels as well. So a really core element of Aikido is the idea of mixing. 
So uh, here what I've got is a drone on channel one, which is coming from Platts. I have a drum loop here on channel two. And rather than coming out of either of the VCA outputs on Aikido, instead I'm coming out of the mix output at the bottom here. Now the mix output is going to give us the uh, combination of the outputs of each of the VCAs uh, in Aikido. And it's going to be an AC coupled output uh, instantly, so you can't use the mix output for CV, unfortunately. So if we turn up our drone and also our drum loop, actually I've got, a v I've got a little LFO on the drone. We can hear that we've got those two signals mixed together. And indeed, if we wanted to, we could even overdrive the drums a bit. For a bit more grit, that's cool. Now, if you want to take uh, the output of the VCAs out of the uh, mix output, that's what the mute buttons across the top are for. So if I want to take the um, drone out, we can just take it by uh, hitting the mute button there, or I should say, unenabling the channel, I guess. And we could do the same here with the drums, of course. Now, while you're making use of the mix output, you can still be taking signals from the VCA outputs individually as well. And there's actually something that's worth talking about in regards to how they interact with the uh, mute buttons, actually. The way that the mute buttons interact with the outputs of the individual VCAs on Aikido is going to depend on a jumper setting, or one of four jumper settings, one for each channel on the back of the module. So the sort of default setting as it comes from the factory is what I've got on channel two here. So if I turn up my VCA here and I hit the mute button, uh, nothing is going to happen. Now if I, just to prove that the mute button is actually doing something, in the mix output, if I mute it, then it disappears. So by default, on the default jumper setting, the mute button is only going to interact with the mix output. So this setup has a, a bunch of uses and, and basically it boils down to if you're using the individual out to do another thing that you don't want to stop happening when you uh, mute that VCA. So for example, if you are, um, uh, say you're sending this particular track also into a reverb and you want to be able to trail that thing off naturally rather than have it cut off uh, when it disappears from the main mix output, or perhaps you're using the output here to modulate something else, maybe uh, sending it to an envelope follower or a compressor to do sidechain or get to sidechain uh, in a little while because Aikido can do that as well. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially that's the default. Mute button doesn't affect the VCA output. The um, alternate setting, if you uh, change the jump setting on the back, is that your mute button does also affect the VCA output as well. And again, it's gonna depend on what you're trying to do uh, in your particular setup. So, um, for example, the reason I currently got this set up this way is that I had a patch running where I had the kick drum uh, in uh, channel one. I was using the kick drum to do sort of sidechain pumping, and um, that meant that if I wanted to stop the sidechain pumping, I could uh, uh, mute the kick and the sidechain pumping would stop as well as the kick. If I had it set up like channel two was, when I muted this channel, you'd still get that pumping happening, which depending on what you're trying to do might be what you want. But having that flexibility there is obviously um, really, really useful. The mix output, however, is not the only place where mixing takes place on a keto. In fact, the whole sort of philosophy of the module seems to be based around mixing and cascading things. So here I've got a patch where I have um, four different oscillators plugged into each channel of Aikido. And now I'm not coming out of the mix output here. Instead, I'm coming out of uh, VCA4. And if I turn up this channel, we can hear the input of VCA4. However, if I now turn up the input of VCA3, 
will also hear that oscillator and on two and on one. So unless um, otherwise interrupted by patching something, um, each output of Aikido flows into the next output. Now that's not to say that the output of each VCA flows into the next input. Um, if you want to do that, you can, but you have to patch it manually. Uh, but we're actually getting the mixed output of each of here. So this is functionally at this point the same as the output of mix, right? Now if we want to um, create submixes here, we can take a patch cable and we can take uh, an output of one of the other VCAs. So now if I take a patch into VCA channel 2 here, we can now hear that those first two channels have been taken out of this one. And perhaps we patch it into the other side of the stereo here. And now we have uh, one and two on the right hand side and three and four um, coming out of just channel four on the uh, left hand side. So you can very quickly create submixes inside Aikido um, outside of what's going on in the mix output. The other thing which is cascaded here on the VCAs is the input of the CV. So if I plug uh, a LFO here and I turn up the CV here for channel one and then for channel two. You can hear that they're all pulsing together. Very nice. But if I take a different CV, uh, a different LFO here, different CV source and plug it in there, it's going to break the normalization at this point and now three and four, are, which are on the left-hand side, um, slightly confusingly, are um, now pulsing slow from a different LFO. This also means, incidentally, and we'll get into this a little bit more with some of the other patches, uh, if I was to turn up one of my VCAs here and then invert it, we could start getting cross-fading things happening. things swimming around our heads like that, which is quite cool. But we'll get into that a little bit more in the patches later on in the video. Right, so we've talked about the VCA side of things and how we can mix things together inside Aikido. So in terms of the dynamic VCA mixer title here, we do need to talk about the dynamic bit. And to that end, Aikido has integrated inside it two different envelope followers, which we can use to extract dynamic information from a signal and then apply that dynamic information as a modulation source to something in order to move the signal around. The two envelope followers inside Aikido have different functionality. And the first one we'll talk about um, is a full range envelope follower, which has three different selectable response types. The input for the first envelope follower is this sidechain input here. However, if you don't plug anything into this input, the input that's going into the first VCA is normaled to this input. So if you don't plug anything here, then it's this input here, which will be uh, having its envelope followed. The um, output of this envelope follower is here on this env output, but if you don't plug anything into CV input one, it's going to be here. Uh, so that means that there's a pre-wired uh, CV input for all of our different uh, VCAs here, even if you don't plumb anything in here, and if you don't plumb anything into the sidechain input, it will be the uh, envelope coming from the input on VCA1. So the secret source here is that a, a envelope follower plus a VCA essentially is the recipe for creating a compressor or an expander. So um, if I um, turn up my VCA on channel one here, this is the signal because I have nothing else patched in here that the envelope follower is uh, listening to and my CV input will be the output of the envelope follower because I have nothing else plugged in to the CV input here. And if I turn my level up high and then 
apply a negative envelope follower here, what we get is a compressor. And if I turn the level down a little bit and turn the attenuvert up so that uh, the dynamic peaks are opening the VCA more, we get an expander. So the sort of attacks and the transients, the naturally louder parts get louder and the quieter bits get relatively quieter. So we get more of the attack, less of the room sound. And with a compressor, the loud bits get quieter and the quiet bits get relatively louder. Very nice. Uh, we have three different sort of time responses here. Uh, the fastest one here um, is so fast that in many cases it's going to almost come sort of uh, distort the signal because it's moving the uh, envelope around so much. It kind of gets a little bit crunchy there because the sort of dynamics inside each drum hit are being followed. really slam it if you use it as a compressor. <laughs> Sick. Um, the mid one works well for uh, a lot of things. So the um, mid setting has a slower attack and a slower release. And I think the attack and release are the same, more or less. For like drum loops, that's just a good compressor sound. And going the other way for the expander. Just balanced for the expander. Nice. And then we have the slow setting here, where I think the uh, release gets slower than the attack now. So we'll get a little bit paddier. Like things will get a little bit more sort of soft less punchy. Still nice sounding there. And going the other way with the expander. Again, generally a more soft, less aggressive sound. Nice. Now, of course, um, because um, uh, of the normalization with the CV here, if I bring up this drone here, and then apply a negative CV here, it's going to be um, pumped by the um, drum loop. So we've instantly, without having to patch anything else in really, got that kind of pumping thing happening. And obviously, the balance of the CV against the initial level is going to change things around and also the time response as well. It's a great way to have one signal have a rhythmic effect on another. And with that fast one, you can hear it again get crunched up because the transients are being picked up so quickly. And alternatively, if we wanted uh, this signal instead to emphasize the, um, the different parts here, we could uh, turn the level down and then turn the attendant voter up. And now our drone is following the drum beat rather than fitting in between it. Really cool. Now, of course, we don't need to apply the envelope followed signal 
to the VCA, we can take that envelope followed signal and apply it to something else. So if I take my drum loop and plumb it into a filter, and then take the output of my filter, I'll take the low pass output here, and run that into the VCA so we can hear it. And so we can get the envelope following, of course. And now I'll take that envelope follower output and run it into the CV input on my filter and turn up the attenuverter here. Now we've got a envelope follower filter on that drum. Squelchy. And again, changing the time constants are going to give us different. Oh, that slam was that's sick. <laughs> cool. And again, of course, we don't actually have to apply that envelope followed signal to the thing that's being followed. So instead, if we go back to just having our drum loop happening there, and instead run our drone into the filter, and take a listen to that. different approach to what we had before. But also really cool. Yeah. I love envelope followers. The second envelope follower on Aikido, rather than having a variable timing response, instead is a spectral envelope follower. What that means uh, practically is that the signal going into the envelope follower is pre-filtered to either emphasize the low end, the mid range, or the top end, which means that the envelope is going to be more responsive to those areas of the frequency range. In terms of its time and response, because it still has a time and response, of course, it's about the same as the mid uh, setting on the first envelope follower, which is probably a good thing because that's probably the most versatile uh, of the lot. The spectral envelope follower doesn't have an individual input. Rather, it's going to be following the signal that's appearing on the output of VCA4. Um, now, because of the way that the outputs in Aikido are um, cascaded, that means that depending on what you've done in terms of breaking the normalization by patching into the individual outputs, uh, that could be um, following the combined output of all of the previous um, VCAs. And because I haven't patched anything into the individual outputs in this case, if I turn up my drum loop on channel one, you should see the lights for the envelope follower starts to blink. Uh, there's no normalization for the um, output of the spectral envelope follower. So um, let's just use it as a spectral compressor expander because it's probably the easiest way to hear it working. So let's patch the uh, output here into the CV input of the VCA with our drum loop. So now if we bring up our drum loop, and we can see here, uh, that our uh, spectral envelope here is set on base at the moment. And if we just sort of maybe set it slightly more conservatively and then turn up here, we should get expansion. Which is mostly focused around our kick drum. Because that's what's happening at the bottom end, right? If we set this to mid, You hear that our snares pop out instead. And if we go to treble, 
with those cymbal hits. Pop out a bit more instead. Alternatively, if we wanted to make those cymbal hits less prominent, turn the amount down instead. We kind of get de instead. Or compress on those snare drums to bring them back in the mix. Or compress on those kick drums which gives everything else a little bit more space instead. Really, really interesting tool. And of course, in the same way as we did with our um, first um, envelope follower, we could take that envelope out and use it as a modulation source for something else instead. There's one final feature that I'll have to show you in one of the future patches because the way that my case is currently configured. But uh, on the back side of Aikido, there is a, um, a hookup which allows you to cascade multiple Aikido units into each other to make a much bigger overall cascading dynamic VCA mixer. We'll take a look at that in one of the, um, uh, the patches coming up soon. But I think we've covered all of the individual bits and pieces on Aikido, so let's use it uh, in some bigger patches. So to start off here with the patches, I thought we'd ease ourselves in with something a little bit more on the conventional side. So this is a basic mono synth patch. Uh, in terms of the signal flow, we have the uh, sawtooth output from the 2HP VCO going into the ADAC filter. The output of the filter, the low pass output that is, is going into channel 4 on Aikido, and that's going out into the uh, output of the system. Uh, there's a single uh, two stage envelope here, which is coming from stages. That's running into both the filter and into the VCA for the sound here. Also going one other place, which we'll get to. Um, the sequencing is just coming from Pam's um, in terms of the pitch and the gate sequence. So it's just a sort of basic mono synth setup. Even in this kind of basic uh, setup here, however, it's worth noting that because we can overdrive Aikido a little bit, um, at the moment I'm just um, touching 0 dB on the um, Tenniverts here, if I turn the tenniverts up a bit more, obviously it gets louder, but also we get a little bit of grit on there as well. Bottom end gets a bit bigger. Nice. So a perfectly conventional way to use a VCA as part of a synth voice, you know, we shouldn't overlook the fact that that is, you know, and most um, non-modular synths, that's what VCAs are going to be uh, primarily used for. The other thing that I've got going on here is I've got a LFO which is running into um, channel 1 on Aikido. And the output of channel 1, which is because um, I'm making use of the output that's removing it from the normalization on the cascading, it's just going into the FM input on the VCO, which means if I turn up this fader, it's vibrato. Uh, which is all very well and good, but we probably don't want a vibrato happening all the time like that. It's a bit much, especially at the front end of the notes. So what I have here uh, is I've also got the envelope running into uh, CV channel 1 here. Actually, we don't really need to do that because we could just have it normalising across like that, couldn't we? So we take the one out altogether, so that's running across uh, channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 now. And, and what I can do here, uh, because we have an attenuverter here on um, the uh, CV input, uh, not just an attenuator, is I could set this well, we've got vibrato here, and then apply negative envelope to that CV signal, so the vibrato fades in rather than being at the front of the note, so we get a nice strong front end of the note, and then vibrato into the tail. 
So yep, we can use a keto in a very, very conventional way with our VCAs controlling CV and controlling audio in order to make a synth voice. But we can still get a bit of grunt on there with the overdriving of the VCA as well. Yeah. Love it. Stereo movement and being able to pan things around inside a patch is so important to me. It's why I've got XPan as a dedicated panning uh, module here. But actually, XPan is really um, just a set of VCAs arranged in a particular way. And we can replicate that arrangement of VCAs using Aikido and turn Aikido into a panner. So um, what I've got here at the moment is just some filtered noise coming into channels one and two on a keto. There it is. Uh, so just coming out of kinks into filter up into a buffered malt because I'm being fancy. I'd usually just use a, uh, a stack cable probably. And then going into the inputs of um, channels one and two and then out into the stereo outs of my mixer. So if we think about what panning is, uh, really what we're talking about uh, is uh, the signal being loud on one side, and then as it gets quieter on that side, it gets louder on the other. And that's panning. And so, when you have two VCAs, uh, the ability to set an initial level on those VCAs and uh, attenuators for their CV, you can um, create a panner. So we'll use a, uh, an elephone just a second, but just uh, so we can check this is working manually first. I'm just going to take an output from Quadrat here, which is uh, set to bipolar mode. So in the middle, it's zero volts. It goes down to minus five and up to plus five. And I will plumb that into the CV input on channel one. And because I've plumbed that into the CV input on channel one, that signal is also going to appear on um, the input of channel two as well because of the uh, cascading that goes on there. So uh, to set this up as a panner, we're going to um, want to set things for our sort of midpoint here. So we'll turn those both down uh, a little bit quieter. And what we want to happen is that when this goes up, one of these turns up and the other one turns down. And when it goes down, one of them turns down and the other one turns up, right? So that's simply a case of us putting our attenuators pointing in different directions. So now I can pan the signal from side to side with a modulation source. And if I use an LFO instead, we can get our noise swooping around our head. So two channels of Aikido is essentially uh, a panner. Speaking of panning, a very common feature that's found on a lot of dedicated panning modules is the uh, capability to crossfade. And that's because if you think about what crossfading is, it's basically very, very similar to what panning is. So with crossfading, you're going to start with two VCAs. When one is high, the other's low. And as you apply a CV, um, it will turn one up while it turns the other one down. The only difference with a crossfader is that rather than the outputs of those two VCAs going to two separate outputs, instead you're going to mix them together and listen to them um, through a single output. So here I've just got two different waveforms coming out of my VCO uh, triangle coming into uh, the first channel and a sawtooth coming in to the second. And then I'm taking a single output. I'm just taking the output from uh, VCA2 because um, output of VCA1 will cascade directly into it. In terms of what we do uh, with our CV, it's basically the same as we had with our um, panner. So we'll take another bipolar signal here from Quadrat. We'll move over to a LFO in just a second. We'll patch it in here. 
we'll set these two at their midpoint, apply a negative and a positive here. So the same CV source being moved in two different ways because it's going to be normalized across there and now we have a crossfader between those two signals and we can plug in a LFO and away we go and if we wanted to hear a bit more of both of them at some point we could adjust the modulation amounts and the minimum point so we can have a bit more of a dip in the middle where it goes more towards silence more of a blend like that I love little uh, crossfading things because it kind of makes you feel like you might have uh, something uh, more of a complex oscillator input so <laughs> in this spaghetti of wires um, patch here what I'm trying to do is uh, make use of all of the dynamic VCA and mixer side of Aikido all at once. It's kind of uh, have it form the center performance mixer for this uh, patch. Um, we'll break down what's going on in just a second because obviously there's quite a lot of wires here and we'll talk about what Aikido is doing and particularly for each of the different sounds. Uh, but uh, you may have noticed here that I'm also a very fancy boy and have got two Aikidos here. As I mentioned uh, towards the start of the video, um, it is possible to essentially daisy chain your two uh, or two or more Aikidos to have them um, cascade into each other sort of behind the scenes. Uh, so I'll put a picture up on the screen now from the manual, but essentially there are hookups around the back of Aikido which give you access to uh, essentially the mix output and also the cascaded fourth VCA output and then you can bring that into either um, the first VCA cascaded input on the second uh, Aikido or into the uh, mix output on the second Aikido. So the way I have this configured as it happens is I've actually got, because uh, it made sense for this particular patch, um, I've actually got the uh, fourth VCA output appearing on the mix output for the second Aikido. So this mix output here on the second one is the only output and it's receiving all of the stuff that's going on in the first one. Uh, but you can configure it in, in a couple of different ways. Uh, for your interest also, just so it makes more sense, um, when we talk about it later, I have all of the uh, mutes here set to be pre-VCA, so they're affecting the VCA outputs as well, uh, for a particular reason uh, that uh, I will get to in just a moment. Right, let's try and break down uh, what's going on here, what Aikido is doing for each of the different channels it's receiving, because it's doing a couple of different jobs uh, here and there. So uh, first of all, on the kick drum, uh, this is just uh, the 2HP uh, VCO that's been given the sort of classic kick sort of pluck to its pitch. Uh, that's going through a low pass gate and into a channel on Tercy to give it a little bit of grit. And then that's just coming straight into Aikido. So here, Aikido's level is just literally acting as a level. We're not using anything else on the sort of the VCA uh, tenuverter here. I'm just pushing up to the top to give it a bit more volume and a bit more sort of um, uh, grit up at the top, even more than what we're getting from just Tercy. Uh, so that's just doing that. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, in this case, we're just using Aikido as a straight mixer. Uh, next channel, we've got a hi-hat going on here. Uh, so this is just some noise um, from uh, Kinks. I'm actually using uh, this same noise signal in a couple of different places, so it's multed up uh, here. Uh, that's just going through a filter um, and then coming into Aikido. And in this case, um, I'm using a envelope to move the uh, level of Aikido here, so it's actually essentially the attenuverter, which is acting as our volume control here. If we turned up the main level, you just hear the uh, sort of droning noise, if you like. So here, uh, Aikido is working both as a mixer and actually doing its sort of normal VCA stuff. Uh, similar thing is going on here on the second channel here, for the, uh, the third channel rather, for the snare sound. So that's what's going on behind the scenes. We've got an envelope coming in here 
going to envelope that, uh, for, and that's coming from uh, Pizza actually. I'm just doing a bunch of modulation in here to kind of get this sort of um, 8 bit uh, snare drum sound, which is quite cool. Got a bit more thunk to it than it, you can kind of hear behind the uh, kick drum. Um, next along here, we have a bass line. Uh, so this is coming from Beehive, which is a uh, Platz clone. This is running the newest firmware with the third set of um, modes. And I'm using the NES uh, mode here. So this mode uh, gives you a arpeggiated kind of um, uh, Nintendo 8-bit um, thing going on on the uh, main output, which I'm using in a patch. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but on the aux output, it gives you that same um, pitch, essentially, um, or the same root pitch, uh, but as a sort of triangle wave bass line kind of thing. It's a really amazing mode. Um, yeah, I, I think overlooked maybe because of all of the cool DX7 stuff that comes before it. It's really cool. Anyway, we're not talking about that today. Um, so that's coming into Tersey just for a little bit of grit and also just takes off some of the um, aliasing top end there, uh, which was a little bit much next to everything else. Um, and then, yeah, Aikido is just doing its usual kind of VCA stuff. So again, it's droning away there if I just turn it up and we're just using a tenuverter there. So that's receiving an envelope. So I've kind of got all my um, rhythmic stuff on the first one here and then as we move over to the uh, second Aikido I've kind of got more melodic stuff on the first channel. We've got the other side of Beehive, that arpeggiating line. Now on this output on uh, on Beehive uh, there's actually a volume envelope uh, applied to it anyway so it's receiving a trigger and it's doing its own volume enveloping so I'm not having to use the VCA side of Aikido to give it that uh, amplitude shape but you should be able to hear that actually there's some pumping going on here. So here I'm using the um, uh, the, the kick drum to pump uh, this channel. Although I'm actually not using the kick drum. So if you listen to the kick drum sound, you can hear that there's actually quite a few incidental hits. So you've kind of got those incidental in-between kicks there. And if you sidechain um, with those kind of in the mix there, it throws the rhythm off massively. Um, so what I'm doing, rather than using the kick drum as the input to our um, envelope follower here, what I'm actually using is the um, straight trigger. So I've got two sets of triggers going to the kick drum. I'm using the straight kick, uh, kick trigger, which is just giving the four to the floor. That's coming into the envelope follower here. And that's then what I'm using to do the pumping. So we only get the rhythmic pumping instead. So um, here I've just balanced the, um, uh, the level of the main sound and then I've basically put a negative amount by the attenuverter to pump it down every time we've got that kick drum sound. And I've got a similar kind of thing going on on the second one as well, just as an alternate um, sound we can bring in there as kind of a second part. So that's uh, just rings, the noise from kinks is going into rings. Uh, I think that's then just coming straight into, yeah, that's just coming straight into Aikido. So that's just noise into rings into Aikido. And again, I've just sort of balanced the volume here and then uh, got the attenuator going down. That's going to be listening to that envelope follow again. So we get that lovely sort of classic techno pumping going on there with the sort of noise there. Very cool. Um, and then on the final one here, because uh, I haven't got anything on the fourth channel here, uh, I've actually got a uh, just a vocal loop But what I've done here, rather than pumping it, is that I've actually got the volume turned down here. And rather than doing a negative um, amount on the attenuverter to pump it, I've actually put a positive amount, which means it's going to be 
rhythmically jumping out with the kick instead, sort of giving you this sort of rhythmic um, emphasis on the kick. So although obviously the words that are spoken are not necessarily in rhythm, it's just, um, I think it's a language tape or something. Um, uh, to learn German, I think that's what this, this loop is. Obviously the, the, the vocals aren't in time. It's not, it's not a timed loop, but because we are emphasizing with the kick, it kind of sounds like it's intentionally spoken, even if you can't really hear the words. It's a really, really cool uh, way of working. So um, with all of uh, the things on this um, BCA, uh, sorry, on this Aikido here, uh, because I'm not cascading uh, the outputs, uh, the VCA outputs of this one into the first VCA output here, this kind of lives on its own. So what I've done is I've taken the fourth VCA channel here and put that into my uh, reverb here. And because I have all of these ones, uh, these mutes here, being uh, pre-VCA, it means that when I mute them, they're not going into the reverb as well, which is why I've got them set that way. If I had them set the way they come from the factory, when I mute uh, uh, these, you would still be hearing it on the uh, fourth VCA output here. So setting those mute jumpers for a particular um, use of Aikido is kind of uh, something you need to think about to make it do the thing that you need it to do. So in this batch, that's what I needed. In other patches, um, in other uses, other use cases, that might be what I want. But yeah, essentially what we've got now is like a, a, a full performance mixer for this particular um, for this particular patch. We've got sub-mixing so that the right stuff is going into the reverb. We're not having our kick and our bass going in there, which we don't really want in there. Aikido is acting as a VCA for some of the sounds, shaping the amplitude. In other cases, it's just working uh, as a kind of a compressor pumper expander based upon the envelope follower, which is following the trigger, not the sound, as a, a different way of using it. And yeah, it's kind of just working as the heart of the, um, the patch here. And uh, there was a big delay to me actually recording this part of the video because I was just sat sort of jamming, obviously. Because, you know, you gotta. what it's all about, isn't it, really? Anyway, I'm going to uh, sit and jam with this off camera for a bit, uh, but yeah, that's uh, kind of Aikido used to kind of do all of its different things um, all at once in a kind of a performance mixer kind of environment. So obviously a key component of Aikido's um, capabilities is uh, that of a mixer. Uh, and that's why we have our dedicated mix output which contains the output of each of the four VCAs. But if we don't plug anything into the outputs of VCA 1, 2 or 3, because of the way that the outputs cascade together, VCA 4's output will also contain a mixture of all of the outputs of the VCAs. So functionally, uh, in that configuration, we have two sort of master outputs for uh, Aikido. What that means is that um, we can take one of those outputs, and we have to do it with the mix, really, um, and plumb it back into the input of VCA1, which creates a feedback loop. And feedback loops are really, really wonderful ways to spice up a sound source. So this drum loop is doing what this drum loop is doing. It's plugged into VCA4. I've taken the uh, output VCA4 into my output uh, for my rack, and then I've taken the mix output and plumbed it back into VCA1. And if we bring up the level of VCA1, we 
start to get some real character happening. The prominent resonances inside the loop become more and more enhanced. We get some lovely crunch. And eventually some tone. Yes. Uh, so this is a fantastic way to dirty up a signal, or indeed uh, a number of signals, because uh, anything we plug into the other inputs will also get put into that feedback loop. So I've got a uh, sort of wompy bass line. So that's without the feedback. But when we start sort of bringing all of those signals in, they will sort of fight with each other. And get all crunchy and grungy. And the fun thing here is that um, we do still have um, our complete module output going into uh, the input of VCA1, which means that the envelope follower, uh, the first envelope follower, will be uh, following that signal. So we can also start to compress stuff, but based on the feedback loop. Which is also ace. Or we can go the other way and expand things so that the loud sounds get thrown into the feedback loop and sort of get that resonance. Yeah. That's cool. Now, of course, we don't need to um, feedback directly into the module itself if we don't want to. We could take that via something else. So, for example, if I take my mix output and go into the input of a filter, and then take the output of the filter back into VCA1, we've thrown that filter into the feedback loop. Now, uh, I've taken the bandpass output. Now, as it turns out, um, this filter actually inverts the phase. So if you feed a um, inverted bandpass filter back into something, you actually get a notch filter. So we get a uh, phaser sound. And if we take the uh, high pass filter output because of the phase relationship, we'll get some other interesting emphases. And if we want things to behave as we would maybe um, expect, we could take that uh, signal and invert it. Kinks will do that for us. Take that inverted signal, come back in here, and now we can emphasize that high frequency inside our feed feedback loop. And we take the low pass output, and get everything boomy. Find that kick drum. <laughs> yeah, a uh, really cool way to add weight and spice and grit to an otherwise fairly boring signal. Yeah. 
so um, this one is admittedly a little bit niche, uh, but I was playing around with it, um, so I thought I'd uh, just share it with you. So at the moment we're just listening to, um, well it's the mix output, but I've muted uh, the other channel that's involved here, uh, and it's just a, a loop uh, that's coming out of disting here. I'm taking the output of this uh, VCA and running it into the side chain, so the um, first envelope follower here. And I'm, I'm doing that from the output rather than from the input because then I have a level control of how much is going into said envelope follower. And then I'm running the output of the envelope follower, the env output, uh, into channel 2 of uh, Aikido. So essentially I'm going to be listening to uh, what the envelope follower sounds like. So rather than using it as control voltage, as a modulation source, I'm actually using it as an audio processor. I'm actually running the output of that um, into a high pass filter, which is uh, set with a cutoff um, low. Uh, that's just because uh, this is um, full of direct current basically, so you get lots of sort of dropouts and stuff and it overdrives stuff really easily if you don't uh, take the DC out. Uh, but uh, what does it look, sound like? Uh, so um, if we turn down our main loop just for a second and turn up the envelope follower. Now the output's quiet because um, uh, it's rectified, so you're only getting one half of uh, the total swing that you would usually get in an audio signal. But you can hear that you get this quite delightful, sometimes a bit distorted, almost ring moddy kind of sound. And the character of it is going to change with the speed that we set this to. So this is on fast at the moment. If we go down to mid. And of course the loop then stops. It's sort of like a broken, wobbly tape cut out and how much we feed into the envelope follower by adjusting the output of VCA1, we're going to get different sort of tonal characters. Now if we mix that in with the original source, It's actually quite a nice way to get some sort of lo-fi, kind of broken, sort of sometimes ring moddy, sometimes sort of tape warbly or vinyl crackle into a loop. So if we take it out, there's the clean loop. Envelope follow back in. If you're after that kind of lo fi sound and you're not using the envelope follower for anything else, or even if you are using it for something else and you could malt it, quite a nice way to get some dirty character into a sound. Albeit a bit niche. One of the things that I appreciate about the VCAs on Aikido is that they go beyond uh, unity gain. So with the fader about here, we're hearing this drum loop more or less as it is. Uh, but if we push it up to the top here, it's going to get louder, yes, but there's also going to be a, um, a change to the sound as it starts to clip. So we can hear now that there's a bit of grit on those kick drums. The snares in particular seem to have more body to them as well. More sort of sustain. Oh, which is good. Um, 
Now, the outputs on Aikido, as we've seen a bunch of times now, uh, cascade into each other. But it is just the outputs which cascade, uh, which means that if I turn up the volume of the second VCA, there's going to be uh, nothing happening to our original uh, loop, which is happening on the first VCA. But there's nothing stopping us from taking the output of that first VCA and plumbing it into the input of the second one and taking this one above unity to get more grip. Just balance the output a little bit there. So that's uh, a bit more grip than we had on the first output. Generally more saturation and crunch going on there. But then, there's nothing stopping us from uh, taking the output of the second VCA and putting that into the third VCA and turning this one up above Unity for even more distortion. Quite a lot more going on there compared to the first level of distortion. And I mean, there's nothing stopping us from uh, taking the output of the third VCA and plumbing it into the fourth VCA and turning that one up above Unity for, you've guessed it, even more grit. And while this might be a slightly extravagant way to uh, create a distortion uh, processor. It is quite a good sounding one. Now you might be thinking at this stage, uh, you might be thinking at this stage that there's uh, maybe a little bit too much harshness and sort of uh, uh, high end clipping happening at the top end there. Well, um, why don't we do something about that? So um, we could take our spectral envelope here, which is listening to this final VCA's output, make sure it's set to treble, which it is. And this is going to be listening to the top end where all of that harshness is. And if we plumb it into the CV input of the fourth one and turn down our attenuverter, we can use that to essentially DS the signal. I still get all that huge amount of fattening and room sound happening at the low and mid range but take out some of that top end crackle so without it and with it and of course we could also mess around with this, uh, some more by uh, for example compressing the original input Uh, or uh, expanding the original input to push it into clipping in that first place. Yeah, so uh, it's a slightly extravagant way to, to get a distortion processor, but um, it's certainly an effective one and certainly having the de-essing at the end as an alternative to just filtering that top end out is a nice option to have as well. Audio rate amplitude modulation is a wonderful thing. So here, coming into the input of Aikido, I've just got the triangle output of the 2HP VCO and it's just playing a basic little sequence. Into the CV input of that channel, 
I've got uh, just a straight up drone coming from Pizza here. And you can hear as I modulate the amplitude of that simple signal, we get a lovely set of extra overtones, sort of slightly focal, glottal, throaty sounds. It's not quite ring modulation. For ring modulation, you need a VCA which will invert the signal as well. But it's definitely got its own vibe. One of the cool things um, with um, sort of single-sided amplitude modulation, if you like, is if I bring down the uh, starting, the initial level of our signal, we get all these other sounds in here where we're just bumping up the signal just a tiny bit, we get all these sort of thinner sounds. And there's loads of nuance inside there. So for this patch, it would be cool if we uh, could take uh, like a, an LFO and mix it in with the CV control for the actual amplitude modulation, the audio amplitude modulation. So we could have this kind of range of sounds happening automatically. We can do that all inside a Kilo. A kilo. So um, what I'll do is I will take my input signal and just move it along uh, into channel three here. And we'll listen to channel three. And we can turn it up. There's some background noise. And then I'll take my modulator, which is coming from Pizza, and just plug it into the input of channel one. And I'll take a LFO from stages here and plug it into the input of um, the second channel here. Now, at this point, the output of channel two is going to contain the output of channel one and channel two mixed together. So we can use Aikido to mix together control voltages and audio signals because the outputs are DC coupled. So if this is containing the mixture of our LFO, which could be used to swoop the level up and down, and the audio rate signal, if we put this into our CV input on the third channel here, turn up uh, that a little bit, and if we turn up the level of the first channel, we'll get our audio rate, and if we turn up the level of our second channel, It's a lovely complex droning signal, but it could get better. It could get better because what makes everything better? Well, that's uh, well, reverb is one thing. That's not what we're going to do today. Uh, putting things in stereo makes things better. We talked earlier about how we can use Aikido to uh, do panning. Well, here we can do audio rate panning mixed in with uh, uh, the LFO rate panning. And all we need to do for that is take the output uh, of, well, first of all, we need to mount our input signal into the next channel first, let's do that. And then if we take the output of that second channel, Remember, our CV on Aikido gets um, uh, normal to cross, so the CV input that we have on the third channel here is also going to be present on the fourth channel. If we just invert that signal, I hope you're listening in headphones. Just going to put 
push the LFO level up so we just about go to zero. If we take out the audio rate, we just got a straight panner. Super cool sound. And then of course changing the shape of our modulating signal. It's gonna give us other world sound. And of course we could change the tuning or the octave, or we'll change the uh, tuning a little bit, we'll just get a bit more beating. Oh yeah. Tune, uh, change the octave. Earlier in the video, we talked quite a lot about how we can take uh, the envelope followers output and use it to control the VCA to create either expanders or indeed compressors. And we can absolutely mash the signal. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention on that that I didn't mention in that section is that because we have the ability to mix outputs together inside Aikido, if you malt your compressed signal um, into uh, multiple VCAs here, we can also set up parallel compressor compression uh, situations here. So we've got a really mashed signal here, um, but I've malted that same drum loop into the input of uh, the second VCA here and we can mix that back in to put some of the transients back but still get in that body so if we take away the compressed smash signal there's our boring drum loop hear how the compression is bringing up all of the body and room in the loop. If we take our clean or dry signal out here, we're back to that absolutely mashed signal that we had before. But blending them together, we can get some pretty interesting in-between sounds. which is pretty neat. If we wanted to try and uh, bring up the transients even more, we could make use of our spectral envelope, uh, which obviously is uh, taking the output of the fourth VCA, which is going to include uh, these VCAs here. 
So if I take the spectral envelope and take it into the CV of our second channel here and aim it at uh, the treble. And turn up the CV amount. That's now going to be expanding the top end of the sound. So all of the rattle of the snare is without the hi-hats and the like. So we can put even more of those transients back in. Expansion and with so we can get really really flexible and surgical and creative with our dynamics processing by doing it in parallel. 